Board of Education order at 7 p.m. Item number two, entertain a motion to adopt the agenda as presented. So moved. Mr. Foote and Cindy, second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstentions. All right. Motion carries. Item number three, approval of the minutes. I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the regular meeting dated January 8th, 2020. So moved. Greg and Mr. Foot. Any discussion? All in favor? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Another motion to approve the minutes of the special meeting of January 15th, 2020. So moved. Greg, Mr. Foot. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any, any opposed? And abstentions. Yes, yeah, Dean. Yep. So noted. I'll entertain another motion to approve the minutes of the special meeting dated January 22nd, 2020. So moved. Mr. Foote. Second. Greg? Any discussion on that? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? And abstentions. Abstain. So noted. Aye. Yep. <laughs> All right, item number four, we have a presentation for a field trip for the Museum of Modern Art. Mrs. Erickson, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. I'm Janet Erickson. It's nice to meet you. Nice right here. Um, but I have been in this position before, so hello again, everyone. Thanks for having me. Um, uh, so for those that don't know me, I'm Shannon Erickson. I teach Spanish here. Um, I have taken two out-of-country field trips. Um, went to Spain and France, went to Greece, one in April um, to Costa Rica, and I have been thinking about doing this field trip for a couple of years now, and just with all of the things going on, hadn't um, gotten to it, and then approached my colleague Gina Ritchie, um, who couldn't be here tonight, but it will be alongside her. She's an art teacher. Um, so we actually collaborate for a unit that, we, that I do in my class um, on... Spanish painters and um, lots of really famous Spanish paintings are in the Modern Art Museum in New York. Um, so the plan is to take um, students from Spanish 3 and 4 because the Spanish 4 students actually did this unit last year but they weren't offered this field trip. Um, so I'm opening it up to them as well along with some art students that also learn about the same painters same styles of art. So um, the actual day will consist of leaving nice and early. Uh, we're going to take a bus. I, I did nail down a price um, with DATCO, who is a reputable um, bus company that has been used by other teachers here. Um, and as you can see on the whole itinerary, we will go to the MoMA. And I'm actually in the process of setting up a tour with a guide who is a Spanish speaker. So our tour itself is going to be in Spanish, um, and it's going to directly coincide with the curriculum um, and this entire unit. So the kids are really excited, hoping for um, you know to be able to go. And then since we are you know spending the time, the money, and taking the time to go to New York, we're also planning to go to um, a Spanish market where they can try um, any different kind of Spanish food that they want. And then um, also just to kind of cross over into another realm, um, we'll go down to World Trade um, and make the visit there as a lot of them haven't even been there yet um, and their interest has peaked in doing that. So um, then we'll be back by about 6, 6.30 p.m. and students will have to you know, arrange for transportation to get back home then. Okay. Any questions from the board? With hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to approve the out-of-state field trip to the Museum of Modern Arts in New York City for Terrible High School World Language and Art students in grades 10 through 12 on March 31st, 2020. So moved. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstentions? 
Motion carries. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks, everyone. I appreciate you. Continue support. All right, item number five, superintendent's update. All right, superintendent's update. First, first part of the update is just to um, give you kind of a final update. Uh, a lot of you around um, the Terrible kangaroos, helping the kangaroos down in Australia. So if you, if you have been watching our Facebook page, you know that Ms. Hurd um, posted a very nice thank you letter to everybody, which really summarized a lot in there. Um, but I love how this whole, whole idea kind of emanated from Ms. Hurd, and then the students really got excited, and a few other teachers got excited with this too. And um, then when it started generating a little bit more um, feedback from the greater community, you know, um, news stations were asking about us, put it on, put us on TV, and then more and more people were sending in checks to to support our cause. So in the end, um, uh, we raised, they raised forty three hundred dollars to go to two very uh, worthwhile organizations down in Australia to support the you know the crises that were occurring down there, and obviously the after effects will be felt for a long time. So we did our little part. Um, to help out, as did many people around the around the globe. So, just wanted to give a shout out to Miss Hurd and all the students who who were involved with that. So that's my first update. The second part of the update is um, we're gonna we're gonna end up doing a presentation for you at some point, probably in March, about the accountability index. It's the basically the report card from the State Department of Education on our district and all of our schools. But I did want to point out that um, Eli Terry. Uh, actually received a, a recognition from the State Department of Education because of their increase in their scores um, last year. Significant increase. Their, their um, recognition was specifically around English language arts and specifically to students who are in what's called the, not, the high needs uh, area. So wanted to kind of identify them. And not only that, the um, State Department of Education were, was very impressed by the increase in the scores and they're going to come out Actually, the chief performance officer, I think is his title, uh, is going to come out and meet with the Eli Terry team, myself, Ms. Parsons, uh, and talk about some of the great things that are going on there and how, we're, how we've made some improvements in the scores. So, because obviously they want to see what can be done to replicate that at other middle schools around the state. So just a nice piece of recognition there. Um, and it comes down to really hardworking teachers using good curriculum and working with students who are also falling behind, making sure anyone who's getting behind grade level, we're providing them with additional support. It's more than that, it's a lot more complex than that, but in a nutshell, um, that's it. The other thing, just a reminder to everybody, we do have a um, public hearing on option number one. We've been talking about it a lot. There's actually um, an article that was in the Republican American highlighting it. We put it on our Facebook page. It's gonna go out in my monthly update tomorrow, but also just here I wanna identify that February 27th from seven to nine in the high school auditorium. We'll give everybody in the community a chance to, to uh, give us some feedback on option one. The plan is to do about a 10 minute presentation. Myself, a couple of the principals, Ms. Parsons, we're still getting some of the details out on what that presentation will look like. But then we'll give the majority of the time for people to provide feedback to the board. Um, and the board has in, you know, mentioned interest in making a decision by the, mid, by the March board meeting about what they would like to do. At least that's been the previous conversations at this time. Uh, and then I want to kick it over to Ms. Ehrenheim. She's going to talk a little bit about pre-K registration. Yeah, so our pre-K lottery opened last Friday. So the application process this year is a little bit different. We are doing an online process for any new students who have not been previously enrolled in our Board of Education preschool program. Um, the program is for three and four-year-olds, and their birth years are in 2016 and 17. So if you have children that are that age, you would be welcome to apply online. Um, the program is located at Plymouth Center School. And next year, we will be welcoming our graduating class of 2036, if I did my math right. Oh. <laughs> yep. 
Um, we've had a little bit of confusion in some phone calls. So to access the application, you're going to go to the main site, not the Plymouth Center site. You're going to go to the main Plymouth Board of Ed site. Scroll down a little bit, and you'll see a blackboard that says Pre-K News. If you click on that, you'll find where um, there's a link that says, please click here to submit the form. <laughs> and that's the online application that you're going to use for the lottery. Um, all of the fields are required, so make sure you go through and fill it all in. And then at the end, you'll get a response screen that says your response has been recorded. So don't go anywhere, do anything, click off the website until you see that. We have had a couple of people say, I filled it out, and then it didn't show up. So we want to make sure everyone's responses that they're putting in are getting recorded. So go to our main site, find the little blackboard. Scroll down to that, and then you can submit your application to the lottery there. Um, it, the lottery does close uh, March 7th, I believe, the, the first Friday in March. Um, and then we will have um, decisions made about you know, who gets into the lottery um, by about mid-March, end of March. So you'll hear back from us, and then you can um, do the registration process, which you'll get information on if you are picked for the lottery. I think that Friday date is March 6th. March 6th, sorry. Yes, I March 6th. It closes. It closes. Yep, so we will remove the link from the website at that time. Previously, you could sneak in late, and this year you won't be allowed to. So March 6th at 4 p.m., the lottery will close, so make sure you get your application in on time. And how many students can we accept in this lottery? Um, so it depends on our special ed numbers, so that's something that... Jen and I will go through once we get the applications. Um, it depends. Our Board of Education pre-K is fully funded by the special ed department, and those students are in there as typical peer models. And so based on what's our incoming class um, and who returns from the pre-K that's already there, so we can't give you an exact number tonight. The, the Smart Start classroom, that will, it, is the full-day classroom that holds 18 students. Okay. And then we have three half-day pre-Ks that can also hold up to 18, but we try to keep them right around 15. So our capacity tends to be somewhere between 60 and 75 pre-K students per year. And as a reminder, that's all, um, that's all free preschool. That it, there is no tuition for those programs. Awesome. And that's my update. All right. Yeah. All right. We're going to move on to the student representatives. Now, I've heard that you've had a lot of homework and stuff, so after you give your uh, presentation, uh, feel free to leave if you'd like, or you can stay for the rest of the meeting. Mm -hmm. Up to you. <laughs> Thank All you. Right. I really appreciate that. Um, so, to start, um, Julia's going to go more in depth with this, but on Friday, the, the, on the 14th, we have a Terryville versus Thomaston basketball game. Um, that day, the school's having like a spirit day where there's also going to be a pep rally. We do it annually, and it's always a lot of fun because we're all hyped about, you know, Thomas fun. <laughs> and then on February 27th, the Friends of Music, um, the Friends of Music have a fundraiser that's being held. It's the annual mattress fundraiser. It is in the calf here. Um, from 10 to 2, they, like, set up all the mattresses, the entire deal, and it's like a mattress store in here. Um, it was really successful last year. And then on February 28th, we have our blood drive, our second one of the year. And if you'd like to um, call, if you'd like to donate, where were we supposed to call to? You were at the meeting? Yeah. Um, he'll talk to his father. Okay, so just talk to um, Nade, and he'll give you more information. Or, like, you can talk to me. I have information on it as well. Um, but, yeah, that's all I got. So on February 4th, the National Honor Society had their induction ceremony, welcoming a group of new juniors to collaborate this year with the seniors. And on Friday, like Taylor said, February 14th, there's the Terryville Thomason game, and it's going to be here at Terryville High School. It starts at like 3 and ends, at, and ends after 7. Yeah, so the boys' JV starts at like 3, 3.30, and the last game starts at 7. And then on March 13th, there's the annual Chili Cook-Off fundraiser for students traveling to other countries with the school to raise money to cover the costs of their trip. Uh, the annual Boy Scout and Terryville High School Leo Club Pasta Supper is on February 29th from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. at the Lyceum. And the Vocational Foods class is actually making hundreds of homemade meatballs along with their homemade sauce. And tickets are available from any Leo Club member. And the Drama Club Spring Musical Sympathy Jones, a spy musical, is on March 5th, 6th, and 7th. And be sure to grab your tickets from any drama member or at ths.booktix.com. Okay. Excellent. All right. Item number seven, public comment. Any 
upon the comment. Right. With none being recognized, we'll move on to unfinished business. 2020 to 2021 budget. Um, we had two workshops. I know the uh, board has worked very diligently on this budget. Uh, we actually sent the principals and everybody back to take a second look and my belief is they've done their due diligence to be fiscally responsible. Um, the increase, some of the, uh, most of this increase, 70% of this increase is contractual. Um, the board has kicked the can down the road for some years. Now it's time to pick that can up. Nothing we can do about that. Um, and that is for um, our teachers who went many years without a step increase. Uh, and this was negotiated prior to this year. So with that said, I'd like to entertain a motion to approve the budget for 2020 to 2021 in the amount of $25,221,972, which is an increase of $734,182, which equates to 2.998%. Mr. Foote. Second. Cindy on the second. Any discussion? When done being heard. Hey, well, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see. Oh, my fault. Didn't raise my hand. I was drinking water. Oh. <clears throat> I'll just I'll keep it short. Um, no one here, I, I don't think, on the board at least, is going to be surprised at how I vote on this. But as hard as this is to believe, I actually hate having to vote no on these budgets over and over. It's. It it, it I don't want it to seem like I think these are bad budgets given in bad faith by any means. I think that everybody who puts these budgets together is putting together what they believe is the best they can possibly put together for the school district. Um, I really do believe that, um, especially after having talked with everybody one-on-one. Um, -on -one. I talked to as many people with I can, as I can in the administration. I think they look me in the eye and they tell me honestly this is what they believe is the best. Um, the, the only thing, and it's, I guess it's my personal issue is um, I've always, always thought um, that we can't, as a town, afford any more spending increases. Um, uh, and this uh, provides about a 3% increase, and I just don't think we can afford to do that. Um, as a board, I do think our job is to give the students the best education we can possibly afford to give. And I'm, not just, I'm just not sure we can afford it. Um, I could be wrong. Maybe there's some economists out there who would come into our town and say, Josiah, I've analyzed the numbers. I've looked at each town uh, population. I've looked at the houses and everything, and you're just wrong. We can afford this, and there's really no difference. That, that's very possible. Um, but I can't, I, I, I just don't think that's the case myself. Um, so uh, I'm just letting everybody know I will be voting against this proposed budget. With that said, I, I sympathize with you, uh, Josiah, but, you know, when we did the presentation, some things were brought, we are what, third from the bottom in our third mm -hmm. for spending per pupil. Um, you know, with that said, you know, um, right now all the cuts that have been made, and we have made cuts, um, if the Board of Finance or the Town Council <coughs> brings this budget back or we decide tonight to go back to the drawing board, uh, we're going to have to look at teachers and those positions. So we have to keep that in mind when we go. Yes, Mr. Foote. I've said this before, and, I, and you said it just a few minutes ago, <clears throat> we are third from the bottom of towns of our size in spending, and I think we do pretty well. So any little bit that we add is to the good. Uh, and it's, it's my opinion that it's our job to present the budget that we think is best. And I think this, you people have worked hard. People smarter than me have worked hard on it. Uh, and that, that since we, we feel that it's our best interest, we should support the budget. Okay. Any other discussion? With none being heard, we'll do a roll call vote. We'll start with.
Josiah? No. Melissa Crowell? Yes. Cindy? Yes. Mr. Foote? Yes. Wilson Johnson? Absolutely. Mr. Shaw? Yes. Okay. Motion carries five to one. Under new business, uh, we received some policies a while ago. This will be the first read. Uh, everybody should have had them and read them. The first one is uh, the student sunscreen use, and the other one is the health examination practice and procedure. What you don't see on here is one that we have decided to do some more research on, uh, and that has to do with teachers being able to um, take away recess. Uh, it is state statute that they can't, but we do have to follow it. But as a board, my position is we don't have to accept it if we don't agree with it. We have to follow it, but we don't have to accept it. We are researching to see if that is the case or not. So that's why that one is left off, and uh, we'll bring that back in March for a first read. Okay. So this is the first read. Any questions on this? Right. Yes. Yes, sir. What was that, though? There was a um, policy that uh, the teachers cannot take away recess oh, from okay. a child. I know what you're talking about. Okay. Right. Any other discussion or questions on that? No? Not right this second. Okay. All right. So we'll move to item number 10, board member committee reports. Finance and Operations. The Finance and Operations Subcommittee met prior to the board meeting. The subcommittee reviewed the accounts by facility report for the month of January 2020. This report will be forwarded to the Town of Plymouth Board of Finance. The personnel report was also reviewed. Okay. 11, public comment again. Any public comment? With none being heard, we'll move on to item number 12 on the agenda, board liaisons to schools. We'll start with Plymouth Center. So, um, so the, uh, they had a January family feast at Tony's Coffee Shop. That apparently went well. Um, uh, for upcoming events, I have two. There is a Pasta Heaven fundraiser pickup Wednesday, March 4th uh, from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. And they have a book fair that goes on from Monday, March 9th until Friday, March 13th. Um, and they voted to approve their bylaws. So, that all happened. Cindy? For the middle school, we just had our skate night yesterday with the most amount of skaters we've ever had of 205. So that was a really great turnout. Everyone had a lot of fun. We're planning our next event for March 20th, which is going to be a comedy night, adult only. Um, 6 p.m. the doors open, 7 o'clock the show starts. Um, it's going to be at Nucci's for $25. It includes apps and three comedians from the Funny Bone. Um, so that should be a really great, fun adult night out. Um, we are also looking to build up our 8th grade committee for their ceremony at the end of the school year. So on February 25th, um, if any eighth grade parents can come to the PTA meeting, that would be appreciated. And we are looking for raffle items for the economy. For the Booster Club, um, we have our staff versus student game coming up on March 26th. So any staff that would like to play against students and students come and cheer on students or staff. Um, we've been giving away free t-shirts at the game, which has been going over really well. Um, our cross-country virtual jackets came in. The kids just got those today, so I'm excited to see them wearing them in school. We have concession pasta. Oh, I thought we said something. Um, we've been having concessions at wrestling and basketball games. The big game on Friday. Um, come out and enjoy Valentine's Day watching the kids play basketball all day. And our next meeting is March 2nd. Okay. Mrs. Johnson's 
I apologize ahead of time. I'm reporting on two meetings. Um, Ed Advance had a meeting the day after our January meeting, and then it just had the February one. So I'll start with the January meeting, which was the 9th. Um, Jeff Kitchens, which is our executive director, um, spoke about um, all of the RESCs having to submit their RFPs for their birth to free program providers. Um, we had Pat Patrice McCarthy from CAVE come join us. She went over the legislative priorities, especially considering a short <coughs> session this year. As many of you know, um, the regionalization is off the table from the governor, but regionalization, regionalized shared services is obviously still there, especially for special ed. So that's going to be a prime example of that will be our partnership school. They are using that as a model. So that's pretty exciting because it's from our rest. Um, SEL is huge push legislatively this year. Um, and there is a big, big, big push, you probably saw it on, in the newspaper, about um, the religious exemption for immunizations. Um, there's a really big grassroots against that, but it's one of the main uh, legislations that's out there right now. <coughs> um, and then I, that night, I was handed our data report from Ed Advance. So basically, each town in the rest, all the programs that we offer through Ed Advance is in here. So I'm actually going to hand it to Ms. Pat so we can hopefully put it on the website or whatever. So I have that. And then our next, the meeting was last week, which was the 6th. Um, they had a presentation of their audit, and there was no significant findings, so it went great. Uh, the president of Ed Advance Board resigned, so we had a special election um, to get us through the June 2020 meeting. Um, Jeff Kitchens also reported that the chief grant writer of Ed Advance has retired. Um, we took action on the healthy food certification, healthy food adoption for the national food program, which we do. And then we also uh, took action and approved the healthy food certification for food and beverage exemptions. So we'll be doing that soon for us. Um, Jeff also stated that they moved part of our at the access program that Ed Advance does in Danbury. It was um, pre-K through eight, and then there was high schoolers all in the same building. They, they took the K through eight, and they have a new building. So they're moving them, and they're going to separate them. So that's like another program that's almost like a regionalized program. Um, and then this actually goes to, it's part of um, my thank you to Dr. Semmel, but Jonathan Costa came out and I worked with um, a lot of our staff here, and thank you for inviting me to do that. But we worked on the Portrayal graduate and he wanted to thank us for having him come. Um, so that's my report from them, but I just want to say again, thank you, I, I learned so much and I want to say thank you to Lindsay and to Jen because they were really helpful with me. Um, and Darren, our assistant principal, was my partner in crime the second half. So, But it was an amazing experience, and I was glad I was able to do it. And I was happy that we had so many parents be a part of that um, the survey. That was, I think Jonathan said this three times, I can't believe how many parents we had involved. So that was an amazing thing. So thank you. So that's my report. Also, Colonel Kate. Um, the vaccinations uh, legislation that is coming up, the hearing day for that is on February 19th. Mm -hmm. um, and then to go back to something Dr. Semmel said about um, the accountability index, mm -hmm. CABE um, is offering a webinar on February 27th. Um, and the title of the webinar is What Board Members Need to Know About Next Generation Accountability System and Connecticut Report Cards. So if anybody's interested in that, that would be a great segue to the March meeting. Um, and that's all I have for you right now. Okay. Sapta? So do you want to take it or want me to take it? I'll take it. Okay. Um, our SEPTA meeting, we had one this morning. Um, we are partnering with Terryville Public Library to bring in some more presentations and hopefully some new um, and exciting things that I'm not ready to discuss yet. Um, and next Wednesday, the 19th, Ms. Ehrenheim will be coming and speaking to our group about tiered interventions in special education. 
and that is all I have. Excellent. District Safety Committee? Next meeting is 513. Okay. And that's it. All right. With that, we'll move to item number 13 on the agenda, board comments. We'll start with you, Mr. Showers. Do you have any? I'm fine. Mr. Nelson? No. Mr. Foote? No. No. All right. None being heard. Item number 14. Next board meeting. The next regular meeting of the Board of Education is scheduled for Wednesday, March 11th, 2020 at 7 p.m. in the cafeteria at Terrible High School. Item number 15. I will entertain a motion to go into executive session at 7.30 p.m. for the purpose of discussing a collective bargaining issue regarding the UAW Local 376, inviting in Dr. Semmel, Superintendent of Schools, Mr. Hendrickson, Business Manager. So moved. Second on that. Thank you, Mr. Foote. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Right. Motion passes.